وقعد In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I went about installing a set of angel eyes and demon eyes in my W204 headlight. All that coming right up. Okay, so in order to get to the part that I'm about to show you now, you need to remove your headlight from the car because we need to access the internals of the headlight so that we can retrofit the demon eyes and the halo ring angel eyes to the headlight itself. I've already done a couple of videos showing you how to remove the front bar and also how to remove the headlight lens. So you want to watch the videos that I've posted in the top right hand corner right now so that you're able to get an idea of how to remove your headlight. Now you don't have to remove the entire front bar in order to remove the headlight. You just have to loosen it enough so that you're able to remove the headlight from the headlight bracket via the three screws that hold it in. You can then heat the headlight in order to pry the lens off and pull it apart that way you have access to the internals and you can do exactly what I'm about to show you right now this is how I decided to heat up my headlight you don't need to use an oven you just need a box that will seal heat and you basically just cut a hole point your heat gun into it and just let it start heating up the headlight and once it gets to about 15-20 uh, minutes and then you just open it up and it should come off really easy because the mastic will have softened completely so you're going to need a fair few parts in order to make this work I'll leave some links in the description below of everything that I used but I'm also going to list it in the description as well so you basically know what you need in order to make this work so the modification I have done is primarily designed for the bi-xenon headlamps but if you don't have the bi-xenon headlamps and you have the halogen style ones, you can still do this modification because they sell the halo ring kits for both headlights. You basically just have to measure the size of the halo rings that you need for your particular headlight and then buy the appropriate ones that are going to fit your headlight. So for instance, the outer diameter of the low beam in this headlight is a hundred millimeters and the high beam is 76 millimeters outer diameter so those are the two size rings that i bought a pair of each as for the demon eyes there is also a specific product you can buy um, it already comes pre-wired all you have to do is connect it to the power source and it will be ready to go i'm going to leave all the links in the description below of what i use specifically and that way you can get an idea of what you need in order to make this modification work of course you can always go with um, different color halo rings or different color demon eyes you're also going to need a couple of bits and pieces as well but as we progress through the video you will see exactly what i'm using and then you can look through the description and i will list exactly what i have used for this video but let's jump into the next step where we already have the headlight pulled apart and we begin to install the led angel eyes and also the demon eyes now you can either do your rings first or your demon eyes first be careful because these are soldered in and if you keep flexing them back and forth back and forth eventually they're going to break get it how you want it and then uh, route it to where you're going to route it and then we will mount it straight away you've got your 76 mil for the high beam and then you've got your 100 mil for your low beam you've probably seen ways where people do it with adhesive or like a double sided tape that's not going to last these get very hot with the output from the light the best way to get this to stay fixed is to fix it using wire and in order to do this we need to drill two little holes in the headlight itself now you're probably thinking it's going to ruin it but it's really not going to be that noticeable what i've done here is i've drilled a little hole at the top here and i've also drilled another little hole just at the bottom here i used a number one size drill bit and i just simply drilled a hole in there and a hole in there very simple and now we can run our wire if you have a look in here there's going to be a little gap just in here in there we run our wire through there it comes out through the back we guide it to where we want it so now we've got our wire where we want it then just tuck it in get this as center as possible we get our wire and we simply tie it down you see how you see this wire here what I decided to do was I wrapped it in some aluminum 
and that just helps to blend it in with all the other chrome and so that it still reflects light i guess you could just get away with not doing that now it's going to be the same principle for both of them what you do to one you do to the other and for this one i drilled a hole in the bottom here but for the top you don't have to drill a hole because you can just wrap it around the plastic frame of the headlight which is just here that's where you would secure the angel eye to the low beam right here wrap the wire around this top part of the low beam and then you can secure it by tying it on this part of the low beam right here i did drill a hole at the bottom but i didn't drill a hole at the top this is the bottom of the low beam angel eyes and as you can see that's how you would wrap it you would just put it through your hole there bring it around and simply twist it on twist it until it's nice and tight just like you did the top one. We just simply grab our wire and we wrap it. I just used this wire here. I had this lying around and then when I opened it, I noticed oh, the wire is thick enough. So I ended up using just this wire here, cut off a little piece. And in order to wrap it, you simply just put it through your hole, come around the headlight where you want your wire to run. Just tie it like you would tie anything. Now, it's really helpful to have a pair of wire cutters like this. That way you can get it really, really close. You hold it in place where we want it. Twist the wire until it gets tight enough. That's it. Okay, once you get really close, bend your wire over so that your, your tie is going to finish on top of the headlight. And then we just twist and twist until we get it where we want it. Nice and tight. It's been almost two years now and I haven't had one problem at all. Then we wrap the bottom one put it through the hole, bring it around the top. Okay. Now we just uh, tighten it, bend it on down. Okay, that's a pretty solid tie there. But the wires are really thin and small, so you don't really have to worry about it showing too much. It really doesn't show unless you go right up to it. and. Even then, it really is just a very small wire. So it's not going to show at all and it's not going to look out of place or ridiculous. We have it centered now. It's really on there, guys. I mean, that is definitely solid. And once you do that, cut off the rest. All you have showing is just the wire. We'll cut this off as well. And this is why it's really good to have wire cutters like this because you can cut it really, really close to it. Once you install the wire, it's always a good idea to test the wire to make sure that it still works. You don't want to install it and then accidentally break off the wire. So we'll make sure we test it. As you can see, it still works. Now you get the idea of how to do your low beams. It's basically the same principle. You get your light, depending on whether you need a little bit more cable, you just solder on a little bit more. Let me show you guys pretty much what I did in order to extend the wires. Now, for those of you who've never soldered before, I mean, it really isn't that hard. Soldering is something that you're just gonna have to keep practicing. You just have to keep doing it. And then eventually, you will get good at it. We strip some of it back. Okay, you always strip enough so that you can uh, wrap it together. Twist, twist, twist. So the wires don't spiral out get the wires that we're going to use to extend it okay you strip some of that like so twist 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 the wire this is how i do it people are going to have their own ways of doing it grab some heat sink obviously if you're using heat sink you put it on beforehand in this case you could slide it on after but i'm showing you an example of if you didn't have the option of sliding it on after you would have to do it like that where you put on the heat sink first so i just twist the wires together like this Okay, and as long as the wires are twisted together pretty good, it's gonna stay together. Okay. This is where our soldering gun comes in. The point is to heat up the wire, not the solder. Okay, so you wanna heat up the wire so that you can add the solder to it. Allow it to heat up, and when I press it and it melts, I'm going to spread it along my wire. As you can see, it's heated up enough where it's starting to melt the solder. Just melt it on. Melt it, put it on as we melt it. That's good enough for me. Cover it with your heat sink. And then you use some sort of heat. You can always just use the heat off this. Apply the heat to it and the heat sink shrinks. You do the same thing to the other wire. That's how you extend your cables. The purpose of soldering is to heat the wire and then apply the solder to the heated wire. And then it just melts it and gives it a nice coat around the wire. Once you've done that, run your wire through. Like so. You mount it where you want it. 
So I like to push my wire over to the side more so it's hiding behind this chrome piece. Just get a little bit of wire, push it through here, let it come out, wrap it like so. Right, get it exactly how you want it and then start to twist it on. You do the bottom one and that will bring that up tight and it will be fitted onto the headlight. You will have a product that looks just like this. There you go. This is my wire. Just got it running across the top because you're not going to see any of this at all. All this is going to be covered. It really doesn't matter how your wire is run. Look at that. It is solid, guys. It doesn't even move. We have simply run the cables through to the back. Okay, you push it on through here and then you push it to the back. So this is the wire here. What I've also done is I wrapped it in a sort of adhesive foil. It's just to help it blend in. You don't really have to do that. The main one you have to do it to is really just the high beam because you are going to see very little of it. And you want to just make sure that it blends in the best way it can. I've just run the cables to the back and then I've drilled a little hole and I've pushed the cables out through here. Positive to positive, negative to negative, and then I solder it together to a waterproof plug. That way I have a plug for it and I can plug it in and out um, whenever I choose. Now, as for your demon eyes, as you can see here, this is my demon eye right here. For your demon eye, usually it is mounted to this here. It would then be installed like that. But because this isn't like the 2.5 inch projector lights you can't install it that way so the way I ended up doing it was I drilled a hole directly in the center of the projector light bracket and I used the screw that they supply you I drilled a little hole right in the center and I mounted it screwed it in so that it is permanently fixed to this black bracket right here as you can see in the top right now and the red LED light reflects into the projector light lens therefore displaying the red demon eyes for the cable i pushed the cable onto the back and then i dropped it down through here and then i pushed it into the bottom right there and then it came out through here and then I simply folded it over and that's how I routed the cable for my demon eyes. You have so much room under here in order to uh, run the cable in for the demon eyes. And then I folded it over so that I could tap into the wires here. If you take a close look at your plug harness, you'll see that they're labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 14. I tested each pin individually to find where the continuity was and found out which pin was for uh, which uh, light source. And then I followed the wire through here and then tapped into the correct wire according to the pins. That's how I figured out how to connect the wires for the demon eyes to these wires here. I wanted the demon eyes to come on with the parking lights, but I wanted it to shut off as soon as I turned on my headlights. So how I did that was, I tapped into the wires that controlled the parking lights. The number 10 pin of your headlight plug is your ground wire. So the black wire went to the ground wire, which I cut a little piece off here, and then I simply just soldered it a bit on. The red wire goes to the positive of your parking light, and the white wire goes to the positive of your low beam. That way, the demonize always has power until you turn on your headlights and then it will automatically switch off because the white wire will trigger and it therefore turn off the demon eyes. It's just the easiest way to do it. I'm just going to cover up the wires that I tapped into, that way they're not exposed. I'm just going to get some electrical tape and simply just wrap it up. Put these cables back where they belong tuck it behind here so it doesn't come out tuck all our cables back in this clip that it had for it now we'll get our zip ties and we'll tidy up all these cables zip tie it down tidy it up here as well we'll uh, zip tie 
all these cables together and tuck them back in. Nice and neat. Cut them all off, tidy it up. Now we can um, basically clean it all out, spray it inside with some air and then uh, we'll put it back together. We're going to do the same thing to the other side of the headlight. Okay, so after a test run, I decided to solder the positive for the demon eyes directly to the wire. So with a Stanley knife, I cut it, exposed it a little bit, wrapped the cable around it, and then I just soldered a blob onto there. Now I will uh, wrap it with some electrical tape. Okay, I'm just using red so I know that I'm identifying it as a positive cable. You don't have to use red, obviously you can just go all black if you want. Now that's all ready to go, we'll give it a nice clean and we'll uh, put the headlight back on. We want to give it a good clean out. Get your air gun and you... Pull that dust out, we can now give the home a nice clean, grab a nice microfiber towel, we'll clean the glass first, okay, because you want a really clean lens, a clean lens obviously means a brighter light, and then now we'll clean the rest of it, we'll start to wipe everything down, clean it all off those, see all these fingerprint markings, see we give it a good wipe and it all goes away. If you really wanted to and you're into that type of look, this would probably be a good time for you to also uh, spray this all black if you wanted to. You just have to take it all apart and then spray it and then put it back together. And it will look pretty nice. I've seen it done before, but that's only if you're into that whole matte black look. It's not my cup of tea, so uh, I'm not going to do that. If you watch my other video, which I'll post in the top right hand corner now, I'll show you guys in that video how you pull apart this entire headlight. you do anything else you really do want to test it that works that's beautiful we'll test the demon eyes as well now that we have double checked everything we know everything works 100% we will clean this headlight one more time the chrome is what shines really bright so you want to make sure you clean it really well get off all the fingerprint markings that you might have put on there next we'll just reinstall our headlight lens and then we can work on the wiring all right so now I'm gonna reinstall the lens with some mastic I'm going to apply a nice thin layer of demastic all the way around this is what they also use to like seal windscreens apply a thin layer all the way around go all the way around Now we'll just wipe off all the excess, just the excesses on the side here. Okay. Now we can uh, reinstall the lens. Now we don't need to heat it because this is fresh mastic, but if, it, if you're trying to use the old mastic that you had previously, just make sure that there is enough there to seal the headlight, because if there's not enough, your headlight isn't going to seal. Get the bottom in, line it up. Okay, now I do that so that I can come back to the top while the bottom is getting lined up and I'll plug in parking lights while I can. Okay, that's good. We'll push it all the way in and uh, clamp it down.
Now would be a good time to also put the clips on so that it holds it in place. One at the corner here. Okay, and that holds it all in place, but we're going to help it with a clamp as well. Okay. Make sure that it's going to seal very well guys we just check all our seals make sure that it's completely sealed and it is okay now as for routing your cables you want to push it on through here and then through the back use whatever you need to in order to get the cable through so whether it be like a hook tool or even like a pair of tweezers you grab the wire and then you pull it on through eventually you just want to have all your wires pulled out here so that you can solder them together remember positive goes to positive and negative goes to negative once they come out through here you can connect them to your waterproof plug and it will go into one wire because you want them to run all off the same switch or you want them to all be connected to the same power source anyway and that's the best way to do it so you would have both cables, one from your high beam, one from your low beam for your angel eyes. And then you would solder positive to positive, negative to negative, connect that to your waterproof plug. That way you can disconnect it and connect it whenever you need to remove your headlight for whatever reason. Now, you can drill your hole wherever you choose. You can drill your hole here, you can drill your hole there, you can drill it up the top, or you can even just drill it in the back of your cap for your headlights. That way it's easy to replace and you don't have to worry about holes in your headlights. That's how I have mine. I soldered the positive from both angel eyes and then the negative from both angel eyes together and then I simply solder it to the waterproof plug. This just makes it easier when I have to uh, create my wires to wire all this up. But you get the idea as I showed you in this wiring diagram that I have right here. You can see pretty much what you have to do in order to wire this all up. Now, because this video ended up taking a lot longer than I expected, I've decided to break this up into two parts. But if you're pretty skilled and you pretty much know how to remove your headlight and reinstall it, then you pretty much know what to do from here. If you look back and have a look at my wiring diagram, that's pretty much how you would wire this all up. You just need a twin core wire, meaning that you have a positive and a negative. Make sure it's long enough so that you can route it from one headlight to the other and then route it to your fuse box or even inside the car if you want to be able to wire it to a switch. I think about four to five meters will be a safe bet and as for a switch you know you can use any switch you want you can use one that has a light I just used a simple mini rocker switch that works just fine in order to wire it to a switch you need to run it through the firewall so that your switch is accessible underneath your dash wherever you decide to put it but you don't have to do that you can simply just have it directly wired to your fuse box and that way it always turns on as soon as you turn your ignition on and also in part two i will be putting everything back together reinstalling everything back into the car and i'll also show you guys how you remove the headlight initially if you watch the videos relating to how you remove the front bar and how to disassemble the headlight you will get the idea of pretty much how you have to remove the headlight from the car now i never actually did a video showing how to remove the headlight but it really is that simple once you loosen the front bar or remove it because you only have to access three bolts in order to remove the headlight and they're very accessible once you lower the front bar or remove it i hope you guys stay tuned for part two and in that video you'll see exactly how i finish this modification if you like this video thus far give it a thumbs up and as always don't forget to like share comment subscribe ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys in part two